Welcome everybody. Tom and myself are so happy to be with you and introduce to you a new friend of our group, Miss Laura Summer. Laura, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Matt. How are you guys doing? I'm doing okay. Doing okay, Pretty Tom? Good. How are I'm, you? I'm, I'm great. I'm happy to be here. This Me is, too. Uh, 30, 35 ish years of, uh, of life experience led to this moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, watch well, it. and so for those who are watching who may not know, yeah. Laura, you play a very important, very special character uh, for us in the Ghostbuster franchise. You play Janine in the original real Ghostbusters. That's right. I'm Janine Melnitz OG. Exactly. And so we, we know that you, you voice so many different characters, but how did you get connected to the real Ghostbusters? Um, I had just come out to Los Angeles. I had done a lot of commercials in New York and I called up my old, uh, one of my old commercial agents who was somewhere and he said, come on over. And he sent me to some place and uh, in the valley and they gave me a paragraph to read and they didn't want a New York accent or anything. They, and I just sort of was like, hello, Ghostbusters. You know, it was like that. And then about a week later, he said, congratulations, you just got 65 episodes. And I didn't really know what it was, you know, like, cartoon yay <laughs> but at the time I did first of all it was the first cartoon animation audition I ever had and it sounded great so uh I showed up and they the first director they fired that it was a very long day and then they said you know what can you do a New York accent and I said well yeah so that's how that's how Janine Melnitz was born and so uh, from your first episode, I, I'm assuming that was the pilot. Um, did did Janine for you evolve? How did you find her voice over the episodes that you did? I just really did my mother. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in Queens. My mother's from Brooklyn. And I really just did a version, not exactly, but I just, you know, of people I heard in my life. And it just sort of, it was very easy for me. I mean, I had done a lot of, at the time, commercials, a lot of dumb blonde kind of silly kind of gals. And Janine really isn't that, but vocally, I'd already started to play with my voice. And um, so it really, uh, it just sort of really was very easy. For, it was good. I wasn't from, you know, Idaho or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's funny to me because we uh, have met with Ernie Hudson a couple times and uh -huh. how and maybe you've heard the story how Ernie Hudson auditioned to be the voice of Winston Zeddemore, but the studio said he didn't sound enough like the original actor. It yeah, nobody <laughs> told me because really they gave me the first day they gave me the cassette of my audition cassette. I mean, I'm dating myself. I'm dating myself, but um, so they gave that to me to listen to. And they play when you, they always play what you did in your headphones. Well, I don't, I don't think, I think they played in the room. I don't think we, I have those headphones, by the way, the white ones. Um, <laughs> I always feel like they're ice skates on my ears, right? Yep. Um, they played it for me and um, it was just kind of my own voice and uh, sweet, sweet, or maybe slightly younger. I mean, I, I don't. I don't know. And uh, then they evolved to the, uh, you know, changing to figure out what would work. But it wasn't like, can you do it like the girl in the movie? I hadn't seen the movie. So mm -hmm. at the time. And so, and as she evolved is when they wrote for her. I mean, I don't know, is Janine in the pilot? I think so. She, yeah. But she just probably mm -hmm. has a couple yeah, lines. Yeah, just a small, small Yeah, bit. like, hello, Ghostbusters. <laughs> hello, Ghostbusters. You know, but... Um, so, and they didn't use just one writer. So there were uh, different writers who would come in and some really, a couple of them decided to really write something for her. And I think I never watched a show later, but I, I imagine that as the years went on, they got, she got to get, get out of the house a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the cartoon uh, definitely gives Janine a lot more to do than she has in the movies. In the movies, oh. she, 
She's almost like a prop. Uh, but in the cartoon, she gets in there and she, you know, gets she in on the action. She suits up. Yeah. yeah. Suits well, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really fun. And you don't get the scripts in advance usually or anything. It's just kind of they give it to you. It, uh, you can kind of read through it really quick and you go. You have to perform it. Yeah. When you would record, would it be in a group setting or would you record yes. individually? So you were with- uh, uh, Lorenzo Music, yeah. Maurice LaMarche, Arsenio Hall, Frank yeah. Welker. Frank yeah. Welker. And then um, Lorenzo is no longer with us, but uh, he was the voice of Garfield. And then I got cast on the Garfield show and Frank Welker can do- is who is doing Garfield now, who sounds so much like Lorenzo. And I stood out, my call time was like a two and they had started at noon and I stood outside the door and the light was on. So that means the red light don't go in, but you could hear Frank Welker doing Garfield. And I thought Lorenzo would have liked that because he yeah. was, they were very fond of each other and respected each other. And it was the, it was a really good call. I, I've, I've had the fortune of meeting everyone outside of Lorenzo and Arsenio, but I mean, everyone's so funny. How, how was it on the set? Like, did you guys get work done? Because uh, it yeah, seems like well, you guys have a, a lot of we fun. We did a lot of massages and uh, I remember, <laughs> and um, you know, yeah, it, it, you're in a room, first of all, you're not on a, like a stage or anything. You're in a recording studio and everybody has a chair or a stool and you're just sitting uh, next to each other. And um, the first show, I think the reason why they got rid of that director took eight hours. And I had never done one. So I didn't know anything. And I remember Lorenzo saying, it's not usually like this. And I was like, okay, you know, I was like, and um, I was happy to be there as I still try to bring to every job. Of course, now it's mostly in my closet, but um, <laughs> which is my little recording studio. Um, and, um, because we're still not open here in Los Angeles where people want to go into record, you know, there, there is some work being done that way, but if you can work from home, it's just safer. Sure. It's interesting that you, you mentioned the, the Lorenzo music and then the, the connection to, to Frank, because, you know, uh, Dave Coulier ended up replacing Lorenzo. And I wonder if in a different universe, if Frank Welker would have, could have done Venkman as well, you know, because Bankman and uh, the Garfield character, the voices are so similar. So it's interesting that. Mm, you think? Um, uh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lorenzo just did Lorenzo. Oh, that was just him? <laughs> yeah. That's how he talked. He was a producer first. Okay. He was a producer. And then on the Rhoda show, which was after the Mary Tyler Moore show, for all you big TV fans, he was Carlton the Doorman. But he was a he was the producer of the show, and they said they needed a voice for the doorman, and he had been a performer too, and um, a musician, and um, but he was one in a million. Yeah, and is it's interesting too because if I'm wrong, maybe I, if I'm not wrong, and maybe I am, but <laughs> didn't Bill Murray end up voicing Garfield? He did the movie of Garfield. Yeah, so yeah. it's like all the Peter Bankmans working together and playing <laughs> the same. Well, right, but but that's on the feature of the card of, right. of right. Garfield. Yeah, right. So I don't know that Frank Welker has ever met them. I have no idea. You'd have to ask. Him. <laughs> but Frank does everything. Yeah. So let's let's talk about Janine in relation. Like you have a large body of work and you've voiced many many characters over the years. So as far as characters that you uh, that you hold high regard for, your favorites, where does Janine rank in the work that you've done? Well, you know, I guess what it was really fun, and um, then when things went south, um, was it, it was sort of in the, it was, it was in the Los Angeles times and about how they changed how she looked and she was trashy. I mean, all this kind of crazy stuff. And, um, and it, if I recall, they kind of told me, well, yeah, there were complaints about her look and, um, I never heard about the pointy glasses or she was too aggressive. I think they just made that up as they went along. Um, but the, uh, 
you know, there was some, so, so, and somebody said, well, I guess we should change the voice instead of letting me just go back to my, how I auditioned or something. Um, so that's sort of what happened, but I don't even remember if I was ever told or how, cause I did 65 episodes and I think I did another 13. So I, I, and I remember Lorenzo and I went to lunch or something and we were commiserating, but you know, to me, I, I like, it just it didn't feel very good. Um, so I didn't really talk about Janine very much. I mean, I just went on and did other stuff. And um, I really got into ADR where you don't have to audition. They just ask you to show up. And I thought, I really like this. And um, so I sort of made my own way and in my career and um, the, um, I've only recently embraced her again because of the fans. I mean, she's so, and everybody goes, oh, you're the, the real Janine. Well, I never listened to any of the other. I mean, at some point they even asked me to come back and do ex extreme uh, to audition mm -hmm. for it. And I did, and they told me I had the job and then I didn't do the job. And that's just showbiz, you know, it's just, yeah. you know, uh, it's just one of those things. So I didn't really talk about it, but now I do, you know, um, because it's so beloved and it's, you know, I'm, I'm think they should do a reboot. I mean, they are rebooting everything else and a maniacs and I know all those people and they're all <laughs> doing them again. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, um, who knows? Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, fans that have hoped for that as well, you know, like a Netflix reboot or something along those lines. Something. It yeah. would be really fun. I mean, uh, you know, I would hope to be uh, asked to come back or audition or something. I mean, I certainly do Janine, but, you know, the voice. Yeah. And it, it, Matt, I don't know about you, but like I was obviously way into real Ghostbusters. I and I, I'm not just saying this because we're talking with you, Lauren. I mean, no disrespect. I don't think I've ever seen an episode with the other Janine. Like when I, when I see Janine in my head, it's always pointy glasses and sassy Janine. Sassy Janine. Yeah. I, I do get told that, you know, I never watched the show. The other two actresses are terrific actresses. I mean, I, I know them in passing. Um, and um, so I never watched or anything like that, but all the, and I wasn't really active on social media like I am now just this year because of COVID, I guess. I mean, I had a, I had a Twitter account, but it was private. <laughs> you know, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> and I, I didn't really get it. And, um, but I'm love that Laura on Instagram and, and on uh, Twitter, like L O V E love that Laura. Um, and so a lot of fans have sort of found me through you know, and they always say, you know, what are they going to say, right? They say, you're the best, you know, <laughs> I stopped watching. I've, I've heard that from the Scotland, uh, the, the guys in Scotland. They said, I just didn't watch it after. But I think the show's probably lost a lot of bite. Yeah, I would think, I would think so. Yeah, we, Tom and I have talked about how, in regards to a reboot, there's so many scripts that have been written over the years for different Ghostbusters films and stuff like that. We would just love for the voice actors to come back and put, make those scripts into a, to a show. We just think that would be a fun way to. That's a great idea. Well, that. you know, the tweet it out to the powers that be, you know, that Michael Straczynski is still around and, you know, I don't know about the other people or Sony or who, who owns it. I don't, I don't really know, but. I can answer the call. <laughs> I don't know. I, I maybe they like our. That's like our harebrained idea, but but we like it. Um, and it's it's interesting you talk about nostalgia because that's where our whole group and our whole thing comes from. Is you know here we are years later and we're still talking about these movies and the, and this cartoon. So from your perspective, like talking about it this many years later, does it? Are you are you surprised to be having this conversation with us about Ghostbusters? Well, the franchise, I didn't, I didn't know about franchises then. I mean, I've been part of Garfield and uh, Digimon, which is anime, but it's a big franchise too, uh, 20 years. Um, you know, and nostalgia is so big. I don't know that when I was doing it, I was thinking, you know, about any of it. And, but I know it's, you know, there are Ghostbuster groups all over the world. 
all over the world. I mean, I could go all over the, you know, in every city there's Ghostbusters and they, a lot of them do charity work. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't know any of that because it wasn't like I was, I was really quiet about it. I'm not quiet now about it. Now I'm talking about it, but I didn't talk about it for a really long time. <laughs> So uh, we, we talked about earlier how the nostalgia is so strong and the love for this cartoon is so strong that the Ghostbusters YouTube channel has started to bring the show back on Saturday mornings. And so I watched episode one with my youngest son uh, this oh, wow. past weekend. And so that, that's fun for me to relive it and watch it through his eyes. Uh, and I learned that you are not only Janine in that episode, that you are a ghost named Snarg. Do you remember yeah. that? I do, I do, because it was the first episode, and I didn't know that you that they could ask you to do other voices. <laughs> I really had no idea, and um, that they actually can ask you to do three voices. And I was so uh, worried that it would be um, it would sound they would sound different. But I actually just redid my demo. Everybody has to have a, a demo of their work. It's like a business card. And I thought, oh, let me hear that. And I pulled it up and it's very annoying. So I didn't use it, but and it's very high, right? Snarg. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I did that. Is there any other ghosts that you did that you, you remember enjoying? To, I don't it remember seems like anything. they're so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember yesterday. Um, you know, uh, I did, we do a lot of, you know, you know, all that kind yeah. of stuff too, you know, and if that had to be done or incidentals or people shouting out, but as far as, you know, like villains or there weren't that many women on Ghostbusters. No. So they usually brought in somebody to, uh, to do it. Yeah, one of my challenge to do both parts the first time, first, first show. Yeah. I loved on your credits for the show. It's also werewolves. And so it's just like simple things like that, that oh. they had oh. you guys do. Oh, that's funny that you, there, there was a credit. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know. I really didn't know. Yeah. So, it, you know, 2020 was obviously really tough uh, for everybody on the planet. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, your recording uh, studio is kind of in your closet. Is that a reaction to, to COVID-19 uh, COVID and how did that change? How did voice acting uh, fare throughout that? Uh, the well, I heard somebody say we're the cockroaches of the entertainment industry because the work continued, you know, maybe not the first minute, but if uh, the work did continue and um, like I just did a show for Disney and um, Disney Plus that um, I was supposed to do on a set, you know, ADR and which is additional dialogue replacement and um well, you had to have your setup at home, but that meant not just like a, a USB mic, which you plug into your computer like this right here. I have a setup with an interface and headphones and you have to have two screens so you could see the, the picture and um, another uh, uh, like a laptop to link with the studio. And so the work has continued and for people on the big shows, um, the studios help set them up you know, so they could work from home and treat their space, treating to make it soundproof. There's a lot of videos on that. I, I'm like technically <laughs> an idiot. So I've had a lot of help from other actors and friends. Do you look forward to getting back into the studio and-, and uh, Sure, because you miss the camaraderie, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can hear everyone. And this particular job, I could hear the other people and I only knew one of the, there were four of us and I only knew the guy, but the two girls I didn't know. So I never knew who was talking. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's gonna be a while though. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, you had, you had promoted where we can find you on Instagram and Twitter at love that Laura. Where else, if we were looking to see you or hear you, where else could we, we do that nowadays? Well, I've been doing a lot of, the ADR is more of an anonymous kind of, it's a secret club. And um, <laughs> so it's not like, <laughs> it's not like you would hear me, but I do think Digimon's coming back. I know there's a reboot for that show and for the fans of anime, they, you know, there is some crossover between animation and anime fans. And I'm Potamon for those of you who don't know. And um, everybody loves Potamon. Potamon is just, 
the joyous little bird ham it's like a flying hamster character <laughs> boy and um he's really fun to play so i'm on those shows well, that's awesome well that's a, well again laura thank you so much for joining You're us so thank welcome. you for taking your time out of your day to thank to you. relive some of our favorite television and <laughs> one of our favorite characters in the franchise and uh and we're thankful that we get the opportunity to offer a signing with you. your first ever Yes, first ever, ever. in our group. Yes, too. That's yeah. right. We better so, not screw it up, Matt. Yeah, uh, we better not screw it up. We have we have papers between us. <laughs> right. Well, goodbye, everybody. I don't yes. know what voice that is because that's not Janine either. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. All right.